Thanks, and I'm going to uh, tell you why you need to be eating the rainbow. And I will have to tell you that there's a lot of reasons, a lot of research, a lot of chemicals, phytochemicals that I'm going to talk about. But I had to condense it all into 25 minutes. So um, bear with me. So why worry about color? Well, I think you need to keep this in mind. When you think about health, you, you need to think about color. There's, you know, you've, you've, Dr. Roy has done a really good job of telling us basically about the fact that, um, you know, we need to incorporate more in our diet, but iceberg lettuce, frankly, doesn't cut it. So I think you need to choose dark. So it, it, when you think about the different colors, and we're going to go through a lot of the colors, you need to really think about the richness of the color because the richer the color, the more potent natural chemicals they contain, and I'm going to talk about some of those. So think health, think color, think about this picture when you're thinking about uh, eating the rainbow because there's the rainbow. Colorful foods contain phytochemicals. So a phytochemical is a very difficult thing to, to uh, define because it's really not like, you know, we, we know about calories, we know about fat, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, but there is something special in fruits and vegetables and a number of other products as, uh, in addition. And that is a phytochemical. And a phytochemical is a term that is generally used to refer to those chemicals that may affect health. They probably will affect health. They all affect health in different ways. But they're not established just yet as essential nutrients for, the hum for humans. There's a lot of abundant scientific and government support for recommending diets fruits, rich in fruits and vegetables. You know, there was, uh, years ago, if you remember the five-a-day campaign with the National Cancer Society and the National Cancer Institute, you know, five-a-day was, was what they recommended for fighting cancer. Today, and we've done research at the Pennington Center on fruits and vegetables and their potency in preventing uh, hypertension or reducing hypertension the diet known as the DASH diet. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. But the, the little cliche that you should remember, five is fine, nine is divine. And that's really what they're prom we're promoting nowadays. Um, there's uh, only limited ev evidence that health benefits are due to specific phytochemicals. But the thing about the different colors of the different fruits and vegetables and the, and the phytochemicals is that there are hundreds of phytochemicals. So we may not have a lot of potency attributed to one or two, but it's just the, the, the abundance of phytochemicals in uh, different fruits and vegetables. And here's a partial listing. You can see, and you, you probably, you know, I'm not going to go into a whole lot about what these are and what they do. I, I will touch upon it briefly, but these are all certain phytochemicals that, um, you know, that are very common and I will list some of the foods that they're in and give you some brief uh, information about what they do. Um, I know that, uh, how many of you have heard of uh, resveratrol? That's a very popular one for those of us who drink red wine. <laughs> so, and that is, that's one of the uh, phytochemicals, so you know, you've heard that red wine is good, but red grape juice is good as well. So we're, th this is just a, a list of some of the phytochemicals. So what, what do phytochemicals do and why are they important? Well, they function as antioxidants and antioxidants help to uh, enhance your immune response. They may alter estrogen metabolism. The, the other thing that's really interesting is that they cause cancer cells to die. They don't cause healthy cells to die, they enhance uh, the function of healthy cells, but they actually cause bad cells to die in a pro uh, process known as apoptosis. Uh, these phytochemicals, these antioxidants can uh, repair DNA damage that's caused by toxic compounds. So you know, you're, or, and detoxify carcinogens. So the point here is that as we're talking about all these phytochemicals and the antioxidants, you can see that every one of these functions is, is um, 
related toward making you much, much healthier. And so that's, a, a, and this is a very good and an easy way to get to a better health. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about something called the oxygen radical absorbance capacity because that is a technique that scientists, chemists, food chemists have used to determine the amount of antioxidant capacity in biological samples. So it's uh, a, a wide variety of food. I think right now it's, it's up in about, three, in about the area of about 300 foods that have actually gone through this, article, uh, this procedure. Um, one of the, the um, scientists actually who is, very, is a leading scientist in there is actually uh, at the University of Arkansas in Little Rock. Um, but uh, a wide variety of foods have been tested using this methodology. And what he's found is that there are a lot of spices, berries, and legumes that were rated very highly. Uh, the high antioxidants uh, from a diet rich in colorful fruits and vegetables is believed to play a role in the free radical theory of aging. So many of you have probably heard the fact that aging, the process of aging and the t deterioration that is associated with the aging process is often due to free radicals within the body that uh, cause breakdown of fatty acids and different other um, me metabolic compounds in the body. Well, these phytochemicals, th those that are high in this ORAC capacity, is thought to help to delay that or to improve that so that you actually age better. And how many of you don't want to age better? I didn't think I'd hear too many people. So I've got a listing here of the top 20. This is 10, and I have 10 on the next slide of the top uh, 20 foods with very high ORAC scores, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. Um, you'll notice that um, they, these are all foods that have uh, quite a bit of color. Um, we have um, small red beans, and in fact, just recently I was at the store and I got some uh, small red beans, as a because they were cheaper actually than the large kidney beans. And I found a very distinct difference, but very appetizing difference with the small red beans. Um, the wild blueberries, notice that a cup, look, look at these counts. These counts are very high. As we get, as we get down, we see that they're going to decrease somewhat because the top ones are at the top. And look where blueberries are. Wild blueberries, of course, for a cup of wild blueberries have a, and this is just a, um, it's a, Trolox equivalence is just a matter of a, a specific chemical test that's designed to uh, determine how much uh, oxygen um, capacity, antioxidant capacity is in some of these. So it's, it's sort of like a, just relative to the different uh, serving sizes here. Uh, you see dried beans there, uh, red kidney beans, pinto beans, the, also the cultivated blueberries. They're a little less potent than the wild blueberries, but still, um, I think there's a big price difference between wild blueberries versus cultivated blueberries. So, you know, that's often something you have to consider. You could eat maybe twice as many of the cultivated one, and I always like to go up to, um, what is it, Wilson, or during the summer, and I have, have in the past picked as many as 65 pounds of blueberries for the summer, right before, unfortunately, a hurricane. Um, and I lost some power. Uh, cranberries are good, artichokes are good, blackberries are also good, you, and you're seeing a lot of this high antioxidant capacity with very, very dark, rich foods, so that's something to keep in mind. Raspberries, uh, strawberries are good. We have a lot of strawberries here. You're seeing uh, about half of the, the capacity, uh, the antioxidant capacity as the other, but you know, the other thing, too, is don't get focused just on one. Try a, a, there's a variety. So there may be this, this antioxidant capacity, but there may be other phytochemicals within these. Uh, you see red delicious apples and Granny uh, Smith apples, pecans even. I thought that was pretty interesting. And, you know, a variety of other um, foods as well. 
So there's something else to note, and I think this is relative to something I mentioned earlier. With nearly all vegetables, conventional boiling reduces the ORAC value significantly. So this brings me to think about those red kidney beans or those black beans or all those other beans. And I actually did, in preparation for this, look at uh, some data that, um, that was, would help me figure out how much you would lose in terms of the, of the antioxidant capacity. And so it's clear, very clear, that you're going to get a lot less with those dried beans. And based on the data that I'm, I was looking at, it is about 90% less. So if you took that figure of 13,727, um, uh, 13, uh, 13, uh, 13, it's probably going to be about 1,372, but still clearly a good choice. And now that I'm thinking about this, I wonder about the importance of eating peelings. How many of you eat peelings of fruits and vegetables? You know, I did my student teaching um, when I, because I graduated in home economics education, and I did student teaching, and I'll remember this picture in our foods lab, and it was a picture of a very active, vibrant young lady, and it said, Peppy Earl Pearly eats peelings. <laughs> And then there was a little sagging gal, and it said, Droopy Delcy doesn't. So I'll always remember this, and I have used this, and it's been quite a few years ago since I've done that. So I want to show you this apple story that's next. So here's some data on um, red delicious apples uh, with the skin versus red delicious apples without the skin. And check out the antioxidant content when you peel the apple you lose about um, almost half of your antioxidant capacity just by peeling that peeling off. So that is something to remember. Also, the, the same thing goes true with the golden uh, delicious apple, but look at the difference between the red apple and the golden delicious apple. What you see here is that basically the peel, it, 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 is hot. it has a good antioxidant capacity, but it's not nearly as good as the red apple. Also, it, it's, uh, when you take the peeling off, you don't lo lose nearly as much as you do with the red apple. I will also tell you that not shown here is the Granny Smith apple. And the Granny Smith apple is almost equal to a red delicious apple. So there you go. If you like Granny Smith apples, that's for you too, because, and, but don't peel them. Eat, eat the skin. Okay, a word of caution. I have seen some pills in grocery st in stores, in, in supplement stores, that say this is a, a high ORAC pill. Well, we don't know a lot about the relationship between ORAC values. We know that we can see that there are, are very important things to consider with this antioxidant testing. But the health benefits have not been established. We need more scientific studies. We need more data. We need to figure out what exactly is, is going on with the, the potency of these fruits and vegetables. And I will have to tell you that because there are so many phytochemicals within one fruit or one vegetable, it's going to be hard to tease that out. I'm one that is always a proponent of the whole diet. Give me the fruit or the vegetable. Don't put it in a pill, and, I, that's, and I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so we, we don't know whether such values uh, are accurate either. The other thing about the supplement industry, and you need to consider this very seriously, is that within the supplement industry in and of itself, there is not sufficient regulation. You know, you have a, a, a fax label on a, a container, and and, you know, if you think that's gospel, you might be kidding yourself. So be very careful and, and, and be cautious about all those. You know that you're getting things out of, um, out of intact foods. Now I'm going to go through really quickly about the different groups. And I'm going to start out with the red group. 
The red group adds uh, anthocyanins, beta cyanins, and lycopenes. Now, everybody in this room has probably heard about lycopenes, especially you guys that are worried about prostate cancer. Lycopenes are very important, uh, and they, they are found in a lot of red uh, fruits and vegetables, but not in strawberries and not in cherries. There are other things in those. The reds in your diet will uh, help maintain a healthy heart. They will uh, work on memory function, urinary tract, uh, with uh, cranberries especially, and the red groups with the anthocyanins will also lower risks of some cancers. Of the top 20 antioxidant fruits and vegetables, seven of them are red, and there's the list. Strawberries, cranberries, raspberries, cherries, red grapes, beets, who sometimes people don't like beets. I happen to love beets. They are very... Um, very potent, and red peppers as well. The orange-yellow group, uh, these are a great uh, source of carotenoids, and you know, carotenoids are a, a beta-carotene especially is a pro-vitamin A carotenoid, which means it can be converted into vitamin A, and if you consume orange-yellow um, in your diet, you will help to maintain a healthy heart, improve your night vision, uh, help your immune system out and lower the risk of cancer. And th th we still think that there's lots of um, cancer reduction in the orange yellow uh, fruits and vegetables. And some areas, um, and some, and in, in some instances, they will help prevent cataracts. And they will, because it's a, it's a, a lot about the eye thing, and they will protect the body from other types of damage from free radicals. The list of foods in the yellow, orange, yellow group, you can see that the, some of the most potent ones are um, carrots, sweet potatoes, yellow potatoes, the Yukon gold potatoes, uh, pumpkin, squash, um, corn, and yellow peppers. And in the fruits, of course, we uh, heard that a lot about, you know, we know about oranges and tangerines, uh, grapefruit, mangoes, cantaloupe, apricots and bananas are also, and bananas have a lot of uh, interesting nutrients as well. The green group uh, are a great source of the compounds lutein and zeaxanthine, and lutein is actually a yellow-orange pigment, but usually when you get into the green group, the amount of chlorophyll, the compound that gives green fruits and vegetables their color, uh, is, uh, is ma does tend to mask the yellow-orange. The antioxidants that are present in green fruits and vegetables can help prevent macular degeneration, help prevent cataracts as well, and can lower the risk of some cancers. The green group is found, and these are some, and what I'm showing you here are some of the most potent compounds in each of the groups. Uh, the green groups, uh, the green group will found, the uh, fruits are kiwi, green grapes, honeydew, and limes. And of course, the potent uh, vegetables, spinach, green pepper, broccoli, and romaine lettuce, as opposed to iceberg lettuce. The blue-purple group uh, is, uh, are foods that are a great source of additional, additionally of anthocyanins, and resveratrol. Re resveratrol is found in the skin of grapes and is present in purple grape juice and in red wine. So you don't have to drink wine to get resveratrol. Let's make that perfectly clear. A lot of people choose it, but I would never encourage someone to begin drinking if they don't want to drink, but they can get it, the same benefits from uh, purple grape juice. The, green, the blue purple group uh, may protect against heart disease. We, that's been shown with the resveratrol as well. Uh, they have anti-aging effects. They may prevent urinary tract infections and also have anti-cancer properties. All this goes into the fact that they're real, we really are talking about very potent antioxidants that are helpful. And the blue-purple group is found in uh, blueberries, blackberries, grapes, plums, purple cabbage, good for you, purple onion, 
eggplant, purple peppers, and purple endive. And then, of course, you know, it's not exactly a color, but I had to talk about some white uh, fruits and vegetables. And the white, food, the white foods, we, don't, we need to, to know that they actually do help. Um, they're a great source of uh, allicin, indoles, and allele sulfides, and they can help maintain heart health and lower risk of some cancers. The white uh, foods include g onions, garlic, cauliflower, some apples, um, plantains, and shallots. And if I'm going to sum it all up, I, would, I, would, I found this chart on the internet, and it was in some other presentation about color coding your vegetables. I thought it was pretty good in the fact that it did talk about the different colors, the different phytochemicals that were associated with the colors. And I know this is hard to read, and um, I'm just, I, I know it's out there, and so I, I present it to you so that maybe you can go surf the net and maybe find the same. Um, it came from Wadsworth Thompson and I, in 2005, and the fruit and vegetable sources of these uh, particular vegetables. But another good source, you know, you might want to say, well, where can I find out, find a little more information about the, the benefits maybe more description of fruits and vegetables because this, these particular books will have more of a description of the fruits and vegetables. And The Color Code is one of my favorite books. It is very easy reading. And I will tell you that The Color Code's top 10 vegetables, uh, they, they pick some from each group. And the top red ones, this is the, the author of The Color Code, said was tomatoes, red bell peppers, orange yellow, carrots, sweet potatoes, and winter squash. The green group, kale, broccoli, and spinach. And kale is an underrated but very popular um, and wonderful option. And the blue purple, uh, purple cabbage, and eggplant. And the color code's top 10 fruits were strawberries and raspberries for the red group, for the yellow orange, um, oranges, mangoes, and uh, grapefruit, and in the green group, and uh, kiwi and avocado. And yes, avocado is a fruit, but it tastes more like a vegetable. Uh, but you know, you can feel good about eating guacamole now, especially if you get some tomatoes in it, and then you're, you've, you've got a good choice. And maybe you should have used uh, guacamole as one of your snack options, Dr. Roy. So blue purple, uh, blueberries and conquered grapes and dried plums. So those are their top 10 fruits, and that's in that color code book as well. So we need to, we are very interested in blueberries. You saw that blueberries was on the poster. So a USDA database reveals that blueberries contain more than a dozen vitamins and minerals in small amounts. Now remember, you don't have to have something that is packed with something. The, the advantage of some of these fruits and vegetables is that they're very well balanced and contain a little of a lot of things. And that's actually sometimes more important than having one that just gives you one thing. Blueberries uh, are loaded with fiber, and they contain nearly 100 different phytochemicals. And I like this next one. Some data, and I have seen this data presented, suggest that blueberries may help in your memory. So I have a friend that has to have a cup, half a cup of blueberries every day, and he was the one that we went to pick 65 pounds of blueberries with. But is there more you might want to know about blueberries? And our next presenter is going to tell you that the rest of the story. <laughs> 